Welcome to the 2020 Distinguished Scientist Awards Ceremony. My name is Jennifer Larson. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Research. Now, you might be a little bit confused because I said 2020 uh, and we're in 2021, but in fact, this award ceremony is done based on the awards for the last academic year. So it is the 2020 Distinguished Scientist Awards. The program today will start out with a research update then Dr. Gold will give his welcome and remarks, then we'll present the awards, we'll have a message from our deans, and finally the, we'll present the Scientist Laureate Award and he'll have a chance for his remarks. Because it's virtual this year, it's going to be a little different and many people had to do extra things to get this done and I have many to thank in Strategic Communications, in the Vice Chancellor Research Office, in business and finance, the deans and directors who had to do extra special things as well, and all of you awardees. I always like to start this program for everyone who might be attending to remind us of our shared mission statement of UNMC in Nebraska Medicine. Our mission is to lead the world in transforming lives to create a healthy future for all individuals and communities through premier education programs innovative research, and extraordinary patient care. That statement tells us the importance and how we're linked between education, clinical care, and research. And while we're focusing on research today, the research of today informs the education and the clinical care today and tomorrow. Our overall UNMC research goals are to lead globally recognized research programs, to improve the health of Nebraska and beyond, to drive and diversify the Nebraska economy. Our research is about translating from the bench to the bedside to the community. And as you're going to hear today, we're working with many different kinds of communities in many different places. But in fact, that street is not just one way. We're taking things from the bench to the bedside and back again, into the community and back again. And we have many partners in this research as well, commercial, private, and public health partners and agencies. And our research teams are broader. To be able to make a difference, we need not only bench scientists and clinical scientists and public health experts, but clinical practitioners, bioinformaticists, biostatisticians, tech transfer, animal care experts, technology experts, community advocates. And we've been successful. Over the last academic year, 2019 to 2020, we set another record of $174 million of extramural funding. That is an increase of 26%. That is the largest increase we've had since the Affordable Care Act dollars that were uh, given to us more than 10 years ago. And you can see that most of the funding that we receive is in purple, which refers to federal funds. In fact, the white, which is industry, the red and state, and the green, uh, which says other, meaning they're subcontracts from other agencies, and a lot of those are federal as well. So a lot of the funding is coming from multiple federal agencies. A lot of people have asked, how did we get so successful? How did we make such a difference over the last decade? In fact, there are multiple research strategies that I thought I would share. First and foremost, we, it has to do with you uh, here today, that we recruit and retain talented investigators. We look to compete for larger grants and have been able to do so. We continue to try to diversify our funding opportunities and as part of that, expand our clinical trials. We promote innovation and entrepreneurship and we want to mentor and grow our own early career scientists. We need to remove barriers and research processes so that it can be more efficient. And we have to, and do, develop resources that support the best science for the most people. 
Our strategic planning areas, I'm going to show one at a time, and they're in order mostly because of how they interact with each other, because much of our research focuses on more than one area at a time. First, cancer, transplantation, infectious diseases, neuroscience, obesity, diabetes, and heart disease, which oftentimes come together. We do a lot of drug and biotechnology development that overlaps all these areas. And last but not least, we're all about health promotion and health disparity reduction, which crosses over all of these areas. And we couldn't do it, particularly this year, with the pandemic without our partners. First and foremost, Nebraska Medicine, the VA system, Nebraska Western Iowa Healthcare System, Children's Hospital and Medical Center, and this year in particular, the state of Nebraska in its many different agencies as public health partnerships require us to work together. In addition to changing healthcare, research impacts the economy. It's obvious that if you have new grants, you're going to have new dollars and new jobs, but there's an indirect impact as well. When you get new grants or funded investigators, they're a magnet for visitors. That could be students, people coming to conferences, collaborators, people from industries who want to partner. If you have clinical trials and have clinician scientists who run them, not only does that bring in dollars but it also and jobs, but it also has indirect impact in that many of those same providers are also a magnet for new patients to come to our center from other states and around the world and industries to our state and community as well. New invention notices, patents, licenses, and startups. Again, more dollars and jobs. That means in grants, but also startup companies and new industries that can begin to flourish in our state. And finally, health outcomes and health disparities research is important because its impact is to reduce health care costs. When we improve health and reduce health disparities, the cost of health care goes down as well. One of our most important partners for technology transfer is Unimed. And you can see Unimed was very busy this year. Altogether, there were 105 new inventions, 157 unique investigators, or inventors, excuse me, 85 new inventors. We had 16 new licenses, a total of 107 active licenses, 40 products on the market, and five new startups. And you can see that not only did the new inventions or have the new inventions increased each year uh, for the last series of five years, but in the center in the last year, you can see the number of new invention notices, particularly in the third and fourth quarter, which happened to be the first part of the pandemic, was huge because of the fact that there were 48 inventors contributing to 23 COVID-related inventions, they as a group were nominated to be the 2020 Innovators of the Year. So despite the pandemic, or because of the pandemic, we uh, all together started thinking of new ways to do things that would help ourselves and others, and uh, sped up that uh, innovation into the communities at large. And part of our end product is startups. And we had five startups this year, 53% above the five-year average, uh, which attracted $2.6 million of revenue to help develop them. So despite the pandemic, we have accomplished much this year. We've set another record for research awards. We've conducted trials of COVID-19 treatments that provided access to those treatments earlier. We developed intellectual property to combat COVID-19. We've submitted competitive research applications in all fields, not just COVID-19. We developed new tools, resources, and approaches that are likely to persist beyond the pandemic. We've improved biosafety in our research protocols. 
We've published high profile papers and we continue to recruit new faculty, employees, and students. So this is a year to remember. We showed how we can work safely. We trusted and helped each other. And as a result, we moved research forward. We have an awful lot to be thankful for, despite this very unusual year. I want to take a couple uh, moments to talk about the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Our research workforce is diverse. We represent many races, ethnicities, cultures, and countries. And diversity is a strength. It's our strength. It allows us to see problems from many different perspectives and integrate those solutions into many different communities. But keep in mind that our words and actions can be interpreted differently by those from different backgrounds. So as individuals say something that you're not sure you understand or think that it means something different, or if it appears to be offensive to you, talk about it. Conversations help us achieve better understanding. The Vice Chancellor for Research Office is your partner as we maintain a welcoming environment for all, regardless of color, race, country, sex, or sexual orientation, or disability. We want to continue to recruit a diverse faculty and workforce. We want to help you continue the conversation, and we have planned a workshop in inclusive communication this, for later this spring. And we want you all to listen for concerns, and if there are some, bring them forward so we can help you address them as well. Not uh, surprisingly that our campus, despite having changes in research programs and processes and cores, but we also are changing our footprint. And this was a banner year in that regard as well, that the Davis Global Center finally opened, which allows new facilities for educational research. And the National Quarantine Center that's within that facility uh, was ground zero for some of our COVID-related research. We developed the Center for Global Health Security Clinical Research Unit to allow us to be able to uh, study treatments of outpatients who had COVID, as well as initiate a COVID vaccine trial. Monroe Meyer Institute uh, has a new home and it's almost ready uh, to be fully occupied. Uh, so that is something to look forward in the new year. And the Williams Building has been renovated for a hub for education as well as updated research facilities and it will be completed this March. You may be hearing a little bit more about something called Project Next. There is competitive Department of Defense funding request in the federal budget of this year. This is a pilot program to construct an all-hazards facility to improve training, research, and care using a hub-and-spoke model to serve federal government's need for global, national, and regional health security. We are hoping that that funding will come forward so that we can plan a new facility to not only address those concerns, but to expand our capacity for targeted clinical translational research. And now I'd like to introduce Dr. Gold, who of course is our chancellor and needs no introduction. Dr. Gold. Hello, and thank you so much for the introduction, Dr. Larson. I really appreciate the opportunity to be with you and with our research community today, even if it's virtual. First and foremost, I want to congratulate all of our award winners this year. It has been truly a record year. A record year for grants and contracts, a record year for clinical research, a record year for the impact of our science. And in spite of all of the challenges that have been created by the pandemic, an opportunity for the University of Nebraska Medical Center to rise and to demonstrate its expertise, not only in all things pandemic, but in continuing and reinforcing the importance of the research components of our mission. We have so much to be thankful for. First of all, uh, in spite of all things pandemic, our research mission has continued, not only with renewed and record-setting grants and contracts, but equally important and even more so 
is the ability to bring our research scientists, our staff, our students all together to continue the importance of our research mission and to be sure that we deliver the core of our mission-driven programs. You know, we like to say that we change lives with our research, and that happens every day in every one of our research laboratories. I am incredibly optimistic about our future. Our future in terms of the structure and the quality and the scope of our educational and clinical programs, but particularly that of our research and discovery programs. I've learned as I've got an opportunity to not only tour our facilities and to meet our research scientists, but to see the national appreciation, the recognition, the true respect that the country and the globe has for the research done here at the Med Center. Hard to believe, just a few weeks ago, marked my seventh year with the great privilege and honor of serving as the chancellor here at the Med Center. And as excited as I was seven years ago when I joined this team, I'm even more excited now. Project Next, as you've talked about, Dr. Larson, looms bright on the future. The recent passage of the 2021 National Defense Authorization Act and the recognition that we have had repeatedly, not only in the Department of Health and Human Services, the Department of Defense, the VA, uh, Homeland Security, and so many others, but the recognition by both houses of Congress, by the White House, and by so many others as we continue to build the future for health security and at the same time build the basic science and translational research infrastructure for our university, for the communities that we serve, and as an exemplar to the nation. So again, Dr. Larson, congratulations to you and your team, and thanks so much for organizing this wonderful event. And to our research scientists, whether you're being recognized here today or not, thanks so much for all that you do. Congratulations. The best is yet to come. Thank you, Dr. Gold. This year, as in previous years, we're going to present four types of awards. New investigator, distinguished scientist, research leadership, and scientist laureate. We will start with new investigator awards. This term is not exactly correct in that these new investigators are not truly new investigators, uh, but they get this award or achieve this award when they have received their first major independent national funding from whatever funding source. This year, they'll be presented in alphabetical order, not by college, and the deans will have a chance to comment at the end of the research leadership awards. The first new investigator goes to Dr. Leah Cook in the Department of Pathology and Microbiology in the College of Medicine. Dr. Cook studies the interaction between the immune system and the tumor microenvironment that contributes to metastases, particularly to bone for either prostate or pancreatic cancer. Congratulations, Dr. Cook. Next, Dr. Dash in the College of Medicine, Department of Pharmacology, Experimental Neuroscience. Dr. Dash studies the immune mechanisms required for HIV infection and how to regulate them with the goal of eliminating HIV from the brain. Congratulations, Dr. Dash. Dr. Duda in the College of Medicine, Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Dr. Duda works on advanced prostate cancer and the factors that allow it to metastasize to other locations. Congratulations, Dr. Duda. Dr. Bryant England, College of Medicine, Department of Internal Medicine, Division of Rheumatology. Dr. England works on treatments of and improved care for rheumatoid arthritis. Congratulations, Dr. England. Dr. Kyle Hewitt in College of Medicine, Department of Genetic Cell Biology and Anatomy. Dr. Hewitt's program studies the gene regulatory systems of developing blood cells, including how they can be reprogrammed to address anemia and blood cancers like leukemia. Congratulations, Dr. Hewitt. Dr. Idowait in the College of Public Health, Department of Health Promotion. Dr. Idowait's research seeks to reduce health disparities, particularly by evaluating how community beliefs and systems impact them with a particular focus on American Indian health disparities. 
Congratulations, Dr. Edward. Dr. Bhavesh Kevadaya from the College of Medicine, Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience. Dr. Kevadaya works on nanoparticle strategies for improved drug delivery for treatment of HIV and other viral illnesses, as well as tagging markers that can be used for molecular imaging to aid diagnosis and monitoring of disease, and ultimately understanding how therapies work. Congratulations, Dr. Kepadaya. From the Department of OBGYN and College of Medicine, Dr. Suyun Kim. Dr. Kim works on how to best preserve fertility after cancer therapy, as well as how ovarian cancer develops. Congratulations, Dr. Kim. Dr. Anthony Padani, College of Pharmacy in the Department of Pharmacy Practice and Science. Dr. Padani's research spans using the electronic health record as a tool to improve drug prescribing activities to how to best measure drugs like antibiotics in blood to monitor treatments such as HIV or diseases associated with HIV like tuberculosis. Congratulations, Dr. Padani. Dr. Matthew Van Hook, College of Medicine, Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Science. In the Department of Ophthalmology, Dr. Van Hook studies the retina, the part of the eye that allows us to see at a microscopic level from understanding specific ion channels in the retina to the nerve signal responses received as an image in our brain. Congratulations, Dr. Van Hook. Dr. David Warren in the College of Medicine, Department of Neurologic Sciences. Dr. Warren is the new director of the Human Research MRI. He studies memory and language changes with both normal aging and diseases of aging that incorporates advanced imaging techniques. Congratulations, Dr. Warren. Dr. Elizabeth Wilsant, College of Allied Health, Department of Physical Therapy. Dr. Wilsant studies athletic injuries, including in particularly best strategies to improve outcomes after anterior cruciate ligament rupture and reconstruction. Congratulations, Dr. Wilsant. And that is the end of the new investigator awards. The next group are the distinguished scientists. These individuals have reached the level of associate professor or above and been nominated and have a competitive group of funding and highly cited manuscripts as well as uh, some collaborations to warrant and compete for the Distinguished Scientist Award. Our first Distinguished Scientist awardee is Jesse Bell in the Department of Environmental, Agricultural and Occupational Health in the College of Public Health. Dr. Bell's research is focused on monitoring, understanding, and developing best strategies to improve resilience to the impacts of climate change. Congratulations, Dr. Bell. Dr. Vijaya Bhatt, College of Medicine, Department of Internal Medicine in the Division of Oncology Hematology. Dr. Bhatt works on strategies for the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia. Congratulations, Dr. Bhatt. Dr. Deanna Florescu in the College of Medicine, Department of Internal Medicine, Division of Infectious Diseases. Dr. Florescu has focused on the study of opportunistic infections associated with solid organ transplants and treatments of emerging infectious diseases and is now conducting the Novavax COVID vaccine trial. Congratulations, Dr. Florescu. Dr. Gurumurthy in the Department of Pharmacology and Experimental Neuroscience in the College of Medicine. Dr. Gurumuthi develops new genetic models of disease using CRISPR technology and developed an easy CRISPR form of that that is now used around the world. Congratulations, Dr. Gurumuthi. Dr. Sarah Holstein in the College of Medicine, Department of Internal Medicine, Division of Oncology Hematology Dr. Holstein works on understanding and developing new therapies for multiple myeloma in the laboratory as well as in the clinic. Congratulations, Dr. Holstein. Catherine Hyde, 
Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology in the College of Medicine. Dr. Hyde uses microRNAs, which can put the brakes on very specific cell regulation mechanisms to better understand and find new potential treatments for hematologic malignancies. Congratulations, Dr. Hyde. Dr. Robin Lolly, College of Nursing, Omaha Division. Dr. Lolly's research portfolio is broad, from informed health decision-making to the role of the nurse in cancer and post-cancer care, whether of the young or the old, and in reducing rural disparities in cancer and post-cancer care. She also serves as the Interim Associate Dean for Research for the College of Nursing. Congratulations, Dr. Lolly. Dr. Han Jun Wang, in College of Medicine, Department of Anesthesia. Dr. Wong studies the role of neurologic and other mechanisms for vascular disease associated with hypertension and heart failure. Congratulations, Dr. Wong. Dr. Jingwei Ji, College of Medicine, Department of Surgery. Dr. Ji is a member of the Regenerative Medicine Program and has multiple patents and works in many areas from improved tendon to bone insertion for repair of orthopedic injuries to new types of drug delivery to speed wound repair or reduce post-surgical infections and other ways to enhance surgical treatments for brain cancer. Congratulations, Dr. Ji. Next is our Research Leadership Award. We have two awardees this year. This award is given to individuals who have previously been given the Distinguished Scientist Award, are nominated for this award because of an ongoing funded research in quantity and quality, including highly cited manuscripts and what they have given back to the research community at large, that they put them above the rest. With that, I would like to present first Dr. Manish Jain in the College of Medicine, Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Dr. Jain is an associate professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology and studies the role of MUC4 and other mucins in the development of pancreatic and other cancers, as well as new cancer therapies aimed at disrupting this pathway. He has received the Faculty Senate's Outstanding Mentor of Junior Faculty Award and was awarded Distinguished Scientist in 2017. Congratulations, Dr. Jane, for being one of our Research Leadership Awardees this year. Our second Research Leadership Award goes to Dr. Ted Michaels. Dr. Michaels is the Umbach Professor of Rheumatology and Vice Chair for Research in the Department of Internal Medicine. He was the founder of the VA Rheumatoid Arthritis Registry and is Director of the IDEA CTR Faculty Development Program. His research involves both epidemiologic approaches as well as prospective clinical trials of new treatments aimed at improving outcomes in the care of those with rheumatoid arthritis as well as gout. Congratulations, Dr. Michaels, for being selected for one of the Research Leadership Awards. And now, here are some remarks from our deans who want to offer their congratulations as well. We'll start with Dr. Julianne Sebastian, Dean of the College of Nursing. Hello. My name is Julie Sebastian. I have the great privilege of serving as the Dean of the UNMC College of Nursing, and I'm delighted to be with you here today at this Distinguished Scientist Ceremony and to offer my congratulations to each of the scientists receiving awards today. We have the most amazing researchers at UNMC, and the work you're doing is absolutely fundamental to the future. Now, of course, we've always known that, but I think it's even more evident today as we are dealing with the pandemic and social upheaval and so many issues. And we're thinking about how we would characterize the brightest possible future. Your work paves the way. I would like to highlight the work that College of Nursing faculty researchers are doing. They've just absolutely been doing a wonderful job and our research expenditures show uh, some, some indication of that. I'm pleased to share with you that research expenditures have increased rather dramatically for each of the last two years. College of Nursing faculty are addressing their science toward problems with self-management for chronic conditions, symptom science, health promotion, health transitions across a lifetime, and better understanding the optimal ways to educate students, nursing students for the future. 
So we have research underway in a variety of areas and we're really very pleased with the uh, full portfolio of work that faculty are doing. Now I'd like to um, really focus on congratulating Dr. Robin Lally on our faculty who is rec receiving one of the Distinguished Scientist Awards. Dr. Lally is our Interim Associate Dean for Research and she has received the inaugural Bertha Pankratz Professorship in Nursing. Her program of research aims to find ways to support the psychosocial adjustment of people with cancer diagnoses. She has focused her work on women who are newly diagnosed with breast cancer and has developed a web-based psychoeducational program entitled Caring Guidance After Breast Cancer Diagnosis. She is also currently co-PI with Dr. Elizabeth Reed from the College of Medicine on a National Comprehensive Cancer Center Network and Pfizer grant to support care for rural women under 50 with breast cancer diagnoses. And she has had other funding to evaluate the effectiveness of the Caring Guidance Program with rural women and to evaluate e-health innovations with communication. She has a strong track record of progressive and intentionally targeted funding that has helped her explore aspects of psychoeducational support for not only women newly diagnosed with breast cancer, but for other populations and now rural populations. In recognition of her research, she received the College of Nursing 2019 Penny Z. Davis Award for Nursing Research. So my sincerest congratulations to Dr. Lally and to each of you for receiving these important awards. Thank you. Hello, I'm Kyle Meyer. It's my privilege to serve as the Dean of the College of Allied Health Professions. On behalf of the entire college, I'd like to offer my congratulations to UNMC's 2020 Scientist Laureate, Dr. Matt Rizzo, and all the outstanding UNMC scientists recognized at today's ceremony. I also want to introduce and congratulate Dr. Elizabeth Wellsant, a member of the physical therapy education faculty within our college. She is a recipient of a new investigator award for 2020. This award is given to outstanding UNMC scientists who over the past two years have secured their first funding from a national agency. Dr. Wellsant's grant, Osteoarthritis After ACL Injury, Establishing Cumulative Joint Loading as a Preventative Target, was funded by the National Institutes of Health and the Department of Health and Human Services. Dr. Wellsant joined the Division of Physical Therapy Education in 2016, and in a relatively short period of time, she has developed a broad research agenda around prevention of knee osteoarthritis after injury and rehabilitation after ACL injury. She's also funded by the Nebraska Foundation for Physical Therapy, the Rheumatology Research Foundation, and a UNL, UNMC grant through the Vice Chancellor for Research Office. Since 2018, Dr. Wellsant has served as the director of the college's clinical movement analysis laboratory. This lab works collaboratively with UNO, Madonna Rehabilitation Hospital, the Center for Brain, Behavior, and Biology at UNO, Ortho Nebraska, and others to advance research and education in physical therapy as well as fostering clinical collaborations and research in movement science. Dr. Wellsant was also recently awarded the 2021 Early Career Investigator Award in Biomechanics Research from the American Physical Therapy Association's Academy of Physical Therapy Research. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Elizabeth Wellsant. We're extremely excited for Anthony Padani to receive the new investigator award uh, today. As a, as a dean, I previously served as a department chair when Dr. Padani uh, came onto our faculty. And I've watched his gradual progression, getting an NIH award, gradually growing in HIV pharmacology until he's been having a, on a trajectory for an outstanding career. We just, uh, from the College of Pharmacy, we just heartily, Congratulate uh, Anthony for this uh, exciting award. Hello. I want to offer my congratulations to all the 2020 Distinguished Scientists awardees. And thank you for your scientific leadership and your breakthrough research for our community and beyond. You really are showcasing UNMC's commitment to lead the world. 
I'm Dean Khan of the College of Public Health. I also personally want to congratulate two of the college's very own scientists among this illustrious group. Uh, Dr. Regina Ayate is receiving the UNMC New Investigator Award for her work on community systems change related to the cultural context for indigenous populations. We know Gina's passion for this work, uh, which transcends the research, includes our teaching and includes her outreach work. Uh, please watch for the indigenous garden and classroom that she's been working on outside of the public health building uh, sometime in the coming year. Also, Dr. Jesse Bell is receiving the UNMC Distinguished Scientist Award for his work on climate change and health. Uh, you'll get a chance to see the science in action if you'd like at the upcoming regional launch of the 2020 Lancet Countdown Report on Health and Climate Change, where he will present his work on a case study uh, of the health uh, impact of the 2019 floods in Nebraska. Uh, some of you may remember uh, that and those historic floods in the Midwest led to $10.9 billion in economic losses. Anyway, to all of you, including our scientists, your achievement is a testament to ambition and perseverance, even when faced with a national pandemic. Your drive and passion are infectious. Congratulations on your success. Well, uh, thank you for allowing me to participate in this uh, in this Zoom session. Um, I certainly would like to congratulate all of the uh, research award winners um, today, but specifically those um, in the College of Medicine. Um, research uh, is certainly one of the uh, major uh, focus areas of uh, colleges of medicine across the country, um, and our research success and productivity. Uh, allow us to distinguish ourselves from uh, other colleges um, and schools. Um, of course, uh, it's noted that uh, uh, the majority of the, uh, the new investigators and the distinguished scientists are coming from the College of Medicine, and I'm certainly quite pleased to see that. Certainly, they will be the mainstay, particularly the new investigators of the research programs um, for many decades to come. I would also like to recognize, of course, Dr. Rizzo as the scientist laureate um, and uh, Dr. Jane and Dr. Michaels as research leadership award uh, recipients. Um, if nothing else, this demonstrates that uh, you can have uh, outstanding research success um, as well as being both a mentor um, and a uh, administrative leader um, in the college. So certainly congratulations to those three individuals specifically. So in closing, let me again um, thank uh, uh, all of our uh, awardees for um, what they have accomplished. Um, and on behalf of the entire uh, university, please join me in congratulating uh, each one of the recipients from the various colleges. Thank you, deans. Uh, for all those remarks and congratulations again to all of the awardees up to this moment. Uh, our next step is to announce the Scientist Laureate. The Scientist Laureate is our highest award given at UNMC for research. This year's awardee is Matt Rizzo. Dr. Matt Rizzo is the Francis and Edgar Reynolds Chair and Professor in the Department of Neurologic Sciences He's the co-director of the Nebraska Neuroscience Alliance and director of the Neuroscience Services for Nebraska Medicine. He's also the principal investigator for the NIH-funded IDSCTR grant that develops new clinical translational researchers and resources across our state and region. His research is focused on aging and aging-associated diseases, particularly as they impact behavior and complex decision-making, as with driving, Toyota being just one of the sponsors of his research alongside NIH. And as we always do, we will now invite Dr. Rizzo to give some remarks about his research journey leading up to this moment. And for those of you who have not seen his laboratory, it involves driving simulators. So we, you will be seeing Dr. Rizzo in his lab in front of one of his cars. Dr. Rizzo. Hello folks, no slides today, just words of gratitude. Thanks so much for this recognition. It's hard to follow Dr. Swindell's, who elevates us all. 
Congratulations to all the smart scientists recognized this year. UNMC is an academic medical institution. Research is our core mission, along with premier education, patient care, and outreach to our communities, including the underserved. It's our weapon against human suffering and costs of disease. It's also the most social of activities, and that's the essence of our Great Plains IDEA Clinical and Translational Research Network, which I'm honored to direct. To succeed, we have to think outside ourselves, our specialties, and across departments, colleges, and institutional boundaries. C.P. Snow advised us to rejoin the two cultures, the sciences and the humanities, to solve the world's problems. We have to break down silos to achieve E.O. Wilson's consilience, the unity of knowledge. In this spirit, our Great Plains IDSCTR network spans our whole campus, all Nebraska University institutions, reaching Boys Town, institutions in the Dakotas and Kansas, and soon Children's Hospital, Creighton, the VA, a practice-based research network spanning 46 sites, and many other flagship IDEA programs known as COBRIS and INBRIS. Our charge is to build infrastructure, services, resources, and partnerships across multiple institutions, as well as our next generation of investigators and clinicians to advance biomedical knowledge and cures for decades to come. We practice team science with clear rules of engagement and community involvement, giving credit where credit is due. With success comes enormous opportunities to do good. We now convene all national CTR programs from Alaska to Hawaii, Maine to Puerto Rico with links to all national clinical and translational science award sites. Those are the CTSAs. Uh, this makes UNMC a flagship for urgent nationwide biomedical research efforts, uh, as in a recent nimble pivot to form a national COVID registry, a COVID virtual biobank, telehealth, and rural health initiatives. I now chair the American Brain Coalition spanning 100 patient advocacy groups, pharma, universities, professional organizations, and friends at NIH, FDA, and the Congressional Neurosciences Caucus. It's another privilege to serve. That's because brain disorders impose staggering costs of over $1.5 trillion a year. Due to difficulty, delays, and risks, pharma has largely abandoned brain-related product development, leaving our patients bereft of treatments and even worse, hope. We're tackling this through CURE's legislative efforts to create a neurosciences center of excellence at the FDA, spanning drugs, biologicals, and devices to help deliver the treatments that we need. This is consilience and systems thinking at work. Research at UNMC is a target for systems thinking. Act locally, think globally, reduce complicated problems to smaller ones with tractable solutions, know the system. We have IRB, sponsored programs administration and accounting, IT, and legal. The hospital tangles with the med school, the community, the state, and the feds. Altogether, the whole exceeds the sum of the parts. It's all logistics, rules, funds flow, space, connections, stuff, and people. Sometimes a small change makes a really big difference. We need to work to understand research needs, streamline processes, improve efficiencies, remove bottlenecks, and recruit the best people for our growing operations. That's because people are everything. Treat them with respect. Be a communicator and a mentor, up, down, and sideways. Be understanding, because sometimes people surprise you. Assume positive intent until proven otherwise. Take down bullies. They send a demeaning message that can't be tolerated. Don't fear. Don't delay. Sometimes key people leave. They get noticed and recruited away. Don't fret. Be the seedbed of queens and kings. It builds reputation and connections. Sometimes good people pass suddenly, say in a car, plane, or medical tragedy, or COVID strikes, or a derecho, or a cold wave, or a cyber attack. It's all happened. Some days feel like whack-a-mole or Mr. Toad's wild ride. 
never give up, be anti-fragile, build trust, plan for succession. Cemeteries are full of indispensable people. Fortunately, there are always new leaders to mold and mentor. Life is change. Be prepared. Be strong. Keep calm. Carry on. For the greater good, give service to your profession, patience, and the public. Embrace institutional service. Pay it forward. I'm humbled by all the smart, creative people I've had the privilege to work with at UNMC and Nebraska Medicine and over my career, faculty, staff, and community alike. I am proud of all the folks I've helped become doctors, scientists, and leaders. It's a blessing to make a difference. After all, why are we here on Earth? I believe our biggest gift is education. I had the gift of a public education in New York City, and it made all the difference. That's why I feel we must promote science and STEM starting at an early age. Work with the community, spread the gospel. Rise above the gathering storm uh, as uh, ex Merck CEO and surgeon and violinist Roy Vagilis and his NIS caddy, ca uh, colleagues put it. Build science literacy to combat magical thinking and ignorance. Science is not rarefied. It's fun. It's not just test tubes and math. It's also a people's history. It's also good public policy. Francis Bacon is our hero and the scientific method is our culture. My family came over on the boat. They started as coal miners, ditch diggers, and track layers. They were discriminated against. Four of my mom's sisters died of starvation and infection. Everything now is gravy by comparison. My dad was a construction worker and my mom a housewife. They were smart and curious, and they knew the need for science and education. I sure heard about it when the truant officer visited when I cut school. But I love bugs and telescopes and airplanes and space shots and trips to see the dinosaurs at the Museum of Natural History and the huge meteors at the Hayden Planetarium and the gorgeous blue uh, Serenkov radiation glow from the reactor pools at Brookhaven. I blew myself up with a recipe from a book on chemistry magic, almost lost an eye and fingers. I burned a hole in my chemistry teacher's desk in a demo at Tilden High School. I was there with Al, Sh Al Sharpton. Yes, him. Uh, I was lucky after to be my, uh, the first person in my family to go to college uh, at Columbia University. Uh, Dr. Dawson, my ancient chem advisor, was also Isaac Asimov's, uh, the scientist who wrote I, Robot, and a hundred other books. I took humanities from stars like Margaret Mead, uh, the anthropologist with a shillelagh who wrote Coming of Age in Samoa. She liked my paper comparing Puerto Ricans and Esco, Eskimo male ethos and wrote me a med school recommendation to a place that my dad knew as that there John Hotchkiss. At Hopkins I learned and I also got to look beyond medicine. I got to hang glide, run marathons, stress test space shuttle candidates at NASA, meet the moon men and apply to be an astronaut. I landed at, in the Iowa cornfields after that, built a neurology career and a wonderful family. Thanks Annie and Ellie and Franny. I also learned to scuba dive, fly a plane, play cello and make documentaries at my buddy Steve's film production company in New York. Consilience once again. This April 1st, it'll be seven years since our family forged the Missouri to Omaha. It beats outer space most days. It's a privilege to lead the Department of Neurological Sciences and the Neurosciences programs with superb colleagues in neurosurgery, physical medicine and rehabilitation, anesthesia, pain, and psychiatry. I am grateful to help build our biomedical research backbone and network. I'm proud of our mind and brain health labs and neurosciences researchers. We're mining a deep mind together with NIH and industry to improve health, mobility, and quality of life across the lifespan. We're pioneering egalitarian platforms for personalized care with attention to the underserved and forgotten. We use clinical trials, imaging, human factors and ergonomics, simulation, and novel tools to sync sensor signals and glean digital biomarkers from continuous decades of big, real-world data drinking from a fire hose. Our scientists 
Our basic scientists are digging into developmental, degenerative, and regenerative medicine. And together, they're addressing stroke, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, MS and inflammatory disorders, diabetes, cancer, trauma, COVID, and other plagues and scourges here nationally and internationally. Our pipeline spans medicine, psychology, computer science, biostatistics, geography, public policy, business, ethics, law, and the humanities. We even founded a Nebraska Medical Orchestra feeding up to a National Association of Medical Orchestras co-founded by my daughter, the essence of consilience and fun. So thanks again for this honor. I'm grateful to the Dean and Chancellor Offices, Nebraska Medicine, fellow chairs, and all our CTR folks. There are great people and opportunities here. We're scrappy, focused, resourceful, and resilient, beating a path for academic biomedical enterprise and adventure. We're better than we think, and not yet what we aspire to be. Quoting Neil Gaiman, we're tougher than we seem. Our stories will outlive us. Let's make them good. So let's get out the good word on UNMC. We have the ability, vision, and teams to execute. Be brave, be bold, go big. Keep on trucking, keep the faith, be happy, stay safe. Peace. Thank you, Dr. Rizzo. And with his remarks, this is the coming to the end of the program. Obviously, this is a little different with the virtual program this year. We certainly hope that next year we'll be all in person. We may even have a reception sooner than that uh, to celebrate these, uh, all these fine award recipients from this year. Uh, but I would be remiss if I didn't thank again, not only our awardees, and our deans, but all the people who have assisted these awardees along the way, the students, the collaborators, the family members, uh, all the different people that make a difference in the research that we do here at UNMC. I look forward to seeing you in person next year. Thanks again for everything that you do.